Today on the Conscious Creator Podcast, I have the opportunity to steal some time from my good friend, Cam McDougall. Cam today lives in Costa Rica. He's a trauma and breathwork specialist and has the opportunity to himself to guide and coach many individuals from all walks of life. In Costa Rica, he runs his company with his good uh, friend and um, co-creator, Ryan Miller. In between guiding others, I mean, they're chasing waterfalls, they're surfing, they're riding motorbikes, and they're just living life truly to the fullest and, and adventuring and sharing it with the world. So it really is an amazing path that they've, they've uh, gone down and, and what they now bring to others. But prior to that, and the chat that I have with Cam today is uh, where he started and where it all began. And he grew up on, um, you know, the Lower East Side in Vancouver, uh, not so great area. And um, due to what he was told in school, you know, when he couldn't pay attention that he was broken and society labeled him and, and told him that he needed medication. Uh, he believed it and he embodied that at the time. And so, you know, he found himself around other individuals who felt the same. They were indulging too much in things. They were, uh, you know, involved in gang activities, drugs, and um, living the high life for the consciousness that they had at that time. Until Cam describes and explains to us a really unique instance that happened, more than once actually, but um, of you know, once you listen to it, you, you could only explain it as divine intervention. And uh, that was the beginning, the first light bulb moment in his story of when he knew he had to make some changes. And of course, as any individual does, you know, we get these signs and sometimes we have to get them multiple times. And so Cam had to learn a couple of times, but his story is just really amazing. And um, there's many great messages within. He has a lot of wisdom to deliver. And so I'm really excited for everybody to dive into this episode today. <music> Big welcome. I have my good friend, uh, at one point a mentor, and uh, just an all-round heartfelt good human joining me today, Cam McDougall. So welcome, Cam. So, What's up, Mike? So amazing to see you in this space and, and be connected again. Absolute pleasure to be here, my man. Stoked to dive in with you. Yes, appreciate it. So one thing I do on, on the beginning of each chat, uh, just because we all have full lives with lots going on, is I'm just going to ask, and anybody listening can join us, but that we do three conscious breaths together just to really pull us in and uh, ground us in our conversation today. Beautiful. So if you're cool with that, we will do three nice deep breaths in and out together in three two one just close down your eyes and breathe beautiful Shake away the morning. Again, anybody that's diving in to listen to us, shake away anything that's happening this morning just so we can all arrive and be present during our conversation. So again, thank you, thank you, my good friend, for joining us today. And um, to give a little bit of context on uh, Cam and I's relationship, Cam and I met through mutual friends. Jeez, how many years ago now? would that be that would be eight or so you know in the uh in the uh probably a sunset in english bay vancouver bc most likely right. classic yeah. meetup spot yeah and um so we were acquaintances for a while and then uh it was a couple years ago where we kind of got connected a little bit deeper and um i love We've never really talked through this piece, but I actually love how this happened in the world that I'm in now. And of course, understand it a lot more that it was not even close to an accident of how we came across each other. But I had I had reached out to Cam to actually refer. It was my uh, sister-in-law because she was looking to kind of put her 
fitness program into, you know, into a system and, and really start to dive into that world. And I said, ah, I know a guy. And so I had reached out to Cam and of course he graciously accepted to chat with her and, and, um, guide her path. But then he said, how are you doing? And there's a way in which Cam asks questions and, you know, it's not the surface level, how you doing as you're passing on the street or when we're fist pumping a buddy, you know, it's, it's no really, how are you doing as a human? And so that truly opened up a thought pattern for me. And at the time I wasn't doing great. And the comfortable space that Cam had created for that allowed me to truly open up and um, answer that question from a genuine place uh, within myself and to him. And, and that led me to working with him. And um, so I have a lot of gratefulness towards you because you are a big part of what opened me up on this journey. And of course, my journey has been crazy following that. But, you know, I, I truly, truly think that my journey through, you know, my hero's journey and the, and the challenges I went through following working with you would have been a hell of a lot different if I didn't have, if I, we hadn't had created those tools together. And so, um, you know, I have a lot of gratitude and, and beyond the love I have for you. Uh, and we were not connected by accident. Every part of that happened on purpose and just as it was meant to be. And, um, and so again, just another reason of why I was excited to have you on today, because you have so much, so much wisdom in this space and I know you have your own journey. So appreciate you, brother. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you for taking the tools and now making ripples. It's beautiful. Of course. We're, we're only getting started here. And it's, uh, you know, as we open up, it's, we see that light and uh, we can either choose to ignore it or we can follow it. You know, and I've heard you say before, we can either take the red, blue, red, red pill or the blue pill, right? And, and uh, I think once you've, once you've seen the truth, you can't, you can't eat the steak ignorantly anymore. <laughs> no, no, you're a red pillar, man. You're in it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm full into this journey and I absolutely love it and love seeing what you guys are doing. But I would love to dive in with you um, if, if you could start us off, because I know you haven't always lived this way. <laughs> right. And so I love starting with people. Of course, this is called the Conscious Creator Podcast. We love having people that are living every day with intention, right? And consciously. But um, I can tell you, everybody I have on for these discussions didn't start that way. And I know you didn't start that way. And I've heard the story, but I would love if you could kind of wind back time a little bit and, and, and share a bit of your journey prior to where you're at today and, and, and what led you up till now. How far back do you want me to go, Mike? When were we living in the silliness? When were we living unconsciously, you know, and going through life, maybe letting that ego drive the way a little too much? <laughs> yeah. So let's take it back. Let's reel way back. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny whenever I think about my story and my journey, there's a lot of jump off spots and there's been a lot of evolutions. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that the spiritual journey is like layers of the infinite onion, you know, where we're just constantly evolving and shifting and growing. And when I think about when the ego was there, it's, it's a problem because the ego is still there. You know, the ego, the ego is always a part of us and, and never really goes away. And at the same time, if I was to think back on, you know, the times that I was living the most unconscious would have been kind of, I guess, before my first initial spiritual awakening that I did not listen to. <laughs> um, but, you know, just to just to shed a little a little insight, um, I grew up in Vancouver. Uh, I was, you know, raised in a in a good household. My parents are good people. They did everything they could to keep me as safe as possible. However, I was a, a renegade to society and, and really did not like conformity. I did not like these rules or boundaries that society placed on us and these boxes that society put us in. And so, you know, from elementary to high school, I was always put in this box of being a troubled child, 
and labeled someone that was broken in a sense of how I defined it because I had so much energy growing up and they always wanted to medicate me because I would have these outbursts and these explosions. And it was always about, you know, medicating me and, and, and dulling me and, and putting me in this box that I was not, you know, the right type of person for society. And sorry, as I talk, my power might go on and off. That's just the Costa Rica <laughs> okay. vibes here. So we got the generator back on. So we're in action. I thought, I thought that was just the mad energy in this combo. But... <laughs> That's it. We're pumping, man. <laughs> Things are happening. Spirits here. That's actually my guides. It was, it was, it's my guides coming through. It was normal through. to me. Yeah. yeah, it's my guides coming through, not, not a power outage. <laughs> um, but so long story short, you know, I, I, I took this label to heart and, and really became very mad with society and, you know, put myself in situations where I was involved in a lot of drugs, a lot of violence, um, initial dealings with gangs, you know, spent most of my teenage years in and out of juvenile detention. You know, I was this, you know, I was a quote unquote, you know, little hooligan and, you know, I dropped out of high school in grade 10, went to the streets, was dealing tons of drugs, really followed that path and got deep into that path. And it wasn't until I was about 20 years old where, you know, I had my first kind of awakening, you know, that that totally redirected me out of the game and, and into the cooking industry and, and becoming a chef, which led for me to go back to school and became kind of the the conduit for me to to start turning things around in a conventional sense. Um, so what if I can stop you for a quick sec there, what was your what gave you that awakening? Where did that light come from or where did that um, first, you know, light bulb, if you will? kind of say, oh, maybe there's something other than this. And uh... it's funny you say light bulb because um, <laughs> so, you know, this is, a, this is an interesting story. And it's, it, you know, I, I always I graze over it subconsciously because it's only in the last year or so that I've actually started sharing it. Um, when I was about 20 years old, I was, you know, living in the downtown east side of Vancouver. I had two apartments on Nanaimo and Hastings. Um, you know, where we'd stash everything in one place and, you know, we'd do everything else out of the other. And I was walking back from a restaurant called Faux Triple Eight. It was on Hastings and Nanaimo right there. And, and I, I was walking back home. I had a banh mi sandwich in my hand and, you know, a, a, a condensed strawberry milk smoothie, my classic go-to. And, and I was walking back to my house and... I crossed the street and I stopped in the middle of the street. Don't really know what happened beyond that, except for it felt like a, a light bulb hit me in the forehead and it hit me in the forehead and I dropped my sandwich and my smoothie, everything spilled on the ground. And remember, I wasn't, I wasn't meditating. I wasn't spiritual. I was, you know, a, a, a wannabe gangbanger selling drugs in the downtown east side and and you know so i stood there in this space of complete awe of what was going on and i still don't really know how long that was what 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 happened was i i heard a horn in the distance like really far away and it was getting louder and louder and louder and louder and eventually i could tell the horn was right next to me and, and I opened my eyes and I was still standing in the middle of the street and there was a stop sign and there was a bunch of cars lined up and everyone was honking at me to get out of the way. And you're from Vancouver, you know, the downtown east side. It's like, it's not the weirdest thing that you would see, right? But I wasn't high on anything. I was completely sober. And, and I, I basically walked back to my buddy's house and that I was, you know, who was my, my partner. So, you know, we're, it was a shared apartment. And I walked back and I went up to my buddy and, and business partner at the time and, and I just handed him the keys to the car, the, the money, all my stuff, everything that was completely, you know, disassociated to me as a person and associated to the life that we were living. And um, I walked out and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm out, man. Wow. And I uh, went and started washing dishes as a 20 year old high school dropout um, because that's all that my heart could do. It was just, it just like, it controlled me completely. Yeah. 
That's hella powerful, man. Wow. And what, yeah, like how many times have you reflected on that to say, was it divine intervention? Was it, you know, what? No, there's no, or does it, or does it, or does it matter? There's no doubt in my mind that it was, it was the divine, it was spirit. It was my higher self. It was a, you know, I see it as a, as a spiritual bitch slap, you know, where it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're getting into some shit and life ended up going, you know, as expected, completely sideways for that, that person that I was in in business with and in, in partnership with at that time. Um, and, uh, you know, his life is still dramatically affected by it. So it was, it was, a it was divine without a doubt. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. What, how can you ignore that? Well, I right. did, <laughs> you know, I listened to it and then ended up a financial executive doing the same shit. Just, I ended up becoming a, a legal drug dealer with a pocket full of cocaine that I wasn't selling anymore. I was snorting it. So I definitely went back into, you know, the darkness after that because I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the knowledge of what had happened. I, I wrote it off and I was like, yeah, cool. It, it, it probably kept me out of jail or from getting killed because that's where this was going. But um, you know, I, I didn't really listen that first time. Well, we know there's levels to this game, right? And we can all say we've had those, those mini awakenings and that's, that's a certainly massive, <laughs> powerful one. And, um, but I think you nailed it. If you don't have the tools to do it still, you're acknowledge, you acknowledge, but then habits just took that energy and put it in another mm-hmm. unhealthy direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And what, um, I guess, what was phase two? Keep giving us your journey on, you know? So obviously there, there, there was probably a bit of a growth phase through um, washing dishes and cooking. And then that industry in its own, I know, has uh, generally, you know, not the greatest habits with late nights and um, hospitality as a, as a whole. Nah, not at all. It, it, you know, it, it, but it was perfect in, in the same way because, you know, if I think about, a bridge for me out of the intensity of the streets to a more acceptable mayhem. I can't think of a better place than fiery, crazy kitchens. So it, it was, it was a beautiful bridge because it, it gave me an outlet and, and I ended up, you know, getting hired by a guy who was a former gangbanger, you know, so he understood he would, he got who I was and, and he stood up for me when people were like, you shouldn't hire this kid. He's a degenerate. He's a convict, you know, all these different things. And he's like, so am I, you know, and, and here I am. So he, he really brought me under his wing and, and he brought my other friend under his wing too. Both of us, you know, as we got out of jail, he started really helping us. And, that led me to, you know, working my ass off for 16 months in a dish pit for, you know, $9 an hour, just scrubbing shit until 2 a.m., you know, and, and going from, you know, driving a, a Burgundy Cadillac Fleetwood and having, you know, cash to do whatever I wanted um, to that was a, was, a, was a huge ego hit. So that was my first kind of dealings of really swallowing the ego because I had you know, servers and bus boys and all these people at the front of the house that were younger than me, making more money, looking at me like I'm this kind of loser washing dishes. And so I, I really had to swallow my pride, swallow my ego and just worked my ass off, got fired actually once, but then I got hired back because the guy that fired me left. It was just this whole experience. And, and funnily enough, ended up becoming the sous chef of the restaurant and um, went back to school at that point and fell in love with business. And then you know, continued into a world of, of finance and, and became assistant vice president at a financial company and, and really worked my way up. And once again, was making a shit ton of money doing all the things and ended up realizing that the American dream is complete bullshit. And, you know, spent six months of deep, dark depression on my floor. Once I realized that I had the girl, the car, the clothes, the money, all the stuff that I ever wanted, and I was still empty inside. Um, and uh, that kind of led to my second spiritual awakening that I, I really listened to. And that's when I started becoming more conscious, I guess, of the patterns in my life and of, you know, the, the pain that I was harboring in my body. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a journey. <laughs> it's been one, man. It still is. Yeah. Well, it's ongoing. Absolutely. Cause I know after that, I mean, in, in probably the, the, well, I've met you prior to that, but yeah, during, you know, when you and you and Dale were running Barons of Beef, 
and you had a bit of, uh, you know, that was, I don't know if that was the start on your entrepreneurial journey, but a part of it. And uh, of course you had a bit of awakening during that as well. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, well that was kind of when this all happened. Um, you know, I was, I was, you know, delivering meat while I was in my suit from finance on my lunch breaks, you know, that's how Barons of Beef got started. And, um, you know, it, it, when I had those six months of depression and, and anxiety and everything, that was that was when I had Barons. So I, I basically got to a place where I realized, like, you know, I'd created this business on the side. I was doing all these things and I was just I was just miserable. And, you know, I hit it from people a lot. And, you know, I was still a CrossFit coach and showing up to run group classes. And, you know, I was still jovial, fun cam. But when I would get home, I would just crumble and 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 melt into the ground and just you know, sink into these, these, these deep, you know, lonely areas of darkness that pushed me to meditation, which was my first kind of segue out of, you know, that, that stuff. It was a, a friend actually came up and was like from school who I hadn't talked to in, in years. And he was like, Hey, I, I just had this feeling that I needed to give you this. And he gave me a new earth by Eckhart Tolle. And I read it and it was just oh, like, it was powerful. just like, boom, like, you know, the light bulb finally went off where, I was like, okay, here we go. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a life changing book for sure. And that's, that's a great point that you bring up. And cause a lot of people on this, you know, prior to, to this journey that aren't in it, that are feeling those things, that's kind of what, you know, they look at is they feel lost and they're like, where do I start? There's, there's so many things out there now. And, and I love that meditation was your starting place and just creating some silence there. What, what did you do in the beginning? You know, if, if you have someone listening, that's, that's at those first steps saying, I don't know what the hell to do, but I know this doesn't feel right. Yeah. So I, I read that book and when I read that book, it, it was like, I remembered you know, and, and this is where, you know, I'm a firm believer that we have multiple lives. We, you know, our, our soul carries information. You know, these bodies are just the suits that we borrow for this experience. And when I read that book, it was, it was a remembering. It was, uh, ah, oh, this feels like home energy. And from there, you know, he talks all about meditation. You do some meditations. I was listening to the audio book. It was, I was actually using CDs at that point in time. So I listened to the CD audio book in my truck and I would pull over and do the guided stuff that he said. And eventually I just went, you know, I got to start every one of my days with this. Cause I found that when I would close my eyes, take some conscious breaths and allow for myself to, you know, just let the bullshit fall away that I had a great day. And so it kept my depression away. It kept my anxiety away. And, and so I started every day with that. And, and, you know, I, I was already training, you know, five to six days a week going to the gym at 5 a.m. So I, I was already an early riser. And what I did is I just got up at 4.30 and I did half an hour of, mm -hmm. I found a guided meditation that I really liked and I did it every day religiously. And I would not you know, get out, leave my house until I did that meditation because every time I skip, the anxiety, the depression, all these things would, would slowly creep back. You could diagnose it and say, well, I didn't do my practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was my, it was my, my, my medicine. Yeah. And it is. And that's, that's massive. I mean, I can, I can attest to that. It's if I go, if I get into any state where I start feeling anxious or any bit of stress these days, all I have to do is look at it and say, have you been reflecting? Have you been journaling? Have you been right and and get into that and it's 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 um it's incredible how powerful some of the simple tools we have are mm -hmm. right? it's not it, hard no it's just breaking the patterns to build them in and sitting through the shit you know that's required at the beginning because when i started meditating i didn't drop in and just be like oh this is amazing i feel great you know angels are carrying me away it was my mind is fucking scary yeah it's running. you know and and it, and it was like my mind is out of control how can I sit with these thoughts? Oh my God, I am insane. I am bipolar. I'm schizophrenic. You know, all these different ideas came in and, and slowly but surely it just got a little easier and a little easier and a little easier and a little easier, but it takes time. Most people that try meditation once are like, I hate that. I'm not doing it. And that's why they don't do it. But you got to sit through that hate. You got to sit through that pain. You got to sit through that suffering to get good at it, you know? And, and that's, I think the most important piece is that, these tools are great, but they suck at first. 
One hundred percent. It's 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 like anything in life right now, right? It's everybody's looking for that instant gratification, and it's like, well, if I'm not, if I'm not ascending, and uh, you know, I'm not sitting in the clouds after two two yoga sessions, the same for me, <laughs> right? And it's it's so true, and it's sad, but it is. It's it's going through it and just committing to it. Um, just because sure, I agree, it's, it's and just observing the busy busyness if it does arrive, right? It's not defining it. Mm-hmm. What what was that journey? What was that? And we'll get into more of where you're at now in transformation. But what was that transformation like when you've got these um, this group of friends, right? These people you've built your world around um, being, let's let's say, Cam V two. Right. And then you've realized all of a sudden, well, I don't want to go out and drink all the time. And, you know, I don't need to go to these expensive dinners anymore. I don't need to. I want to look inward. You know, I want to sit down with people that I'm having real conversations with. I want to look for where I'm feeling in my life and where there's meaning. And, you know, tell us a little bit about that shift, because um I've gone through it and I know it can be lonely. And so I'm, I'm curious of what your transformation was like, because I know the world you were in and, and it, you know, so when you started that journey, what did that look like a little bit? Oh yeah, this is, this is the, the hardest part of transformation. I think is it all went to shit. You know, I, I got lonely. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have the same conversations that I was having. I couldn't, relate to people in the same way that I was relating to them, you know, and you, you know, I think about leaving the game and I had to get rid of everybody. Mm-hmm. I had to say bye to everybody because the moment that I was back in the situation, it's like, Hey Cam, I got this thing I'm working on. You want to check it out? And that just kind of slowly pulls and flicks at your patterns and triggers. And and before I knew it, I'd be back in. And that's why you know, after I had my 18th birthday in juvenile detention, I got back in the game. I was like, I'm done. And then I got back out and sure enough, you get roped back in. So, you know, and, and then in finance, you know, I, I had this realization that I had to leave. I had to quit my job. I was making a shit ton of money, man. Like I was, I had, you know, every, the, the stability, the this, the that, it was perfect. You know, if I had kept that job, I'd probably be a multimillionaire by now. Right. At the same time, I, I had to walk away from that. I had to leave those people. I had to leave those environments. I, I, I had a tiny, tiny group of friends that I could still talk to, but even friends that were my best friends from elementary school, I don't talk to them anymore. It's not that I don't love them. It's not that, you know, I turn my back on them. I just can't relate to them anymore. And I think this is the, this is like the key of the spiritual journey is everyone wants their life to stay the same, but they want to feel better. Mm. And you can't yes. because if your life stays the same, you're living in the Petri dish from which you formed all your patterns and behaviors. And you became the person that is unhappy or stressed or anxious or depressed. So you can't fix that problem in the same Petri dish. You have to create a new Petri dish. Right. That's, that's, you know, a scientific fact. Well, at least I think it is. I'm I'm not a scientist, but we're going with that. It is now. Right. It is now. We just made it one, but you know, it it was lonely. It was, it was sad. It was, it it was a a full reset of my life. And, And to be honest, when I left the finance game, you know, I left my beautiful Kitsilano beachside apartment and I moved in with my mom, you know, and I went back home. And I had to fully go into a reset because because I needed to get rid of everything. I got rid of my relationship. I got rid of my business. I got rid of all these things that were just that were tied to this identity that was making me depressed and sick. And I hit the reset button on my life. Now, that's easier for a, you know, 30 year old single, well, not single, but, you know, not married human with no children. That's a much easier thing to do. On the flip side, I work with people who are married with children who reset their lives. So it's not impossible at the same time. A lot of people hear that and they're like, well, I'm fucked, but you're not, you can, but it just, 
like I said, you, you, you can't, there's so much more to it. And it's like Einstein says, right? You can't solve a problem with the mind that created it. It's the exact same thing. You can't solve your transformational issues in the lifestyle that created it. Yeah. So that, that's how that transition went. It was, it was bumpy. But then I started finding flow. I started finding out who I was beneath all the bullshit and the masks that I put around myself. And I started truly finding joy and fulfillment. And I had nothing. I was broke. I was, you know, I didn't, you know, my business was still, you know, the Barons of Beef was still at his initial stages. It was not making a lot of money. You know, I think I was making like $1,500 a month. Like I was, you know, I, I had I had no money and I was I was more content I'd ever been in my whole life. Living in my that. mom's basement. Yeah. <laughs> That's know? it. That's it. It's when, when you realize, you know, all these material things and uh, no money in the world is, is, is gonna, gonna bring us wholeness. Right. And it's, um, so that's powerful. And it, it's, I mean, you nailed it. It's an extremely courageous journey and it can be extremely lonely. And that's why so many people back out of it, you know, well, even if they get a, a taste for the magic in it, um, of what it can bring, but until they start to fully commit to it and walk the path and then realize, oh, if I do this, certain people start to show up, right? You start to attract certain energies because your vibration is at a different level now. You're not operating in an unconscious place. You're, you're consciously attracting unconsciously, <laughs> right? Like it's, 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 it's a real amazing game once you get into it and it's but it is it's it's you know it's such a scary place to lean into because people it's it's unknown and as you know at the at the heart at the root of humans is all all, all everybody wants is is to be comfortable and safe right and that's this world is not that it is once you once you truly step into it and you you can be confident in it but it's not, uh, it's not sitting on a couch with a bag of chips and a beer and, and, you know, a, a cozy shoulder next to you that wants to do the same. No, no, it's, it's, that's suppression, avoidance. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it is stepping into a kind of darkness and unknown, but within that, the fucking light that shines is, is, is hella bright on the other side. Oh, it's wild. It's wild. And it's, it's important to remember that we don't know shit as a species, as a human. Nobody knows anything, right? Well, I'm, I'm sure some people do. They've got a decent idea. At the same time, that's just their objective perspective, right? So, you know, when I think about, you know, humans and, and, and what we're here to do and, and how we're here to live, it's, it's also trust in something bigger than you. You know, and, and allow for yourself to open up to this concept that there's so much more than meets the eye. You know, I, I, when I went to Dr. Joe Dispenza's seven day advanced retreat, he showed this spectrum. It was really cool. It was a, a spectrum of energy that was, you know, all the different frequencies of energy around us. And he showed this tiny little sliver and I, I can't remember the exact percentage. It was really small, but it was, I think it was like 0.07%, something like that. And that was light spectrum. So you think about this huge spectrum of, of, of what makes reality because everything's energy, right? At, at a subatomic level. And light spectrum makes up this fraction of what we can see because that's obviously what our eyes pick up. There is so much more to this than what meets the eye. And, and what I've found is, you know, the more that we can tune into the limitless possibility of God, the divine source, whatever it is that's going on around us, it, it, it gets us excited. It gets us curious. We start to investigate and then it becomes a lot easier to get off the couch and put down the chips and pop because you're like, well, what's this Kundalini thing? What's you know, what's breath work? What's meditation? And then you start going in these, these other realms. What's plant medicine? What's ayahuasca? What's bufo? What's how does psilocybin, you know, help me see these different aspects of being? And, and then you start to 
totally open up to these different realms and these different dimensions of consciousness and experience, you know, because I've had experiences in ayahuasca that feel more real than this. So no how doubt. do you explain that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So getting yeah. curious and, and having fun with it is, is how I find I've navigated a lot of the density and the fear and the, you know, the loneliness and the challenges. It's like, it's like a, a an inner and outer exploration. It's the ultimate adventure in life. Why are we Absolutely. here? Absolutely. What are it's we doing? Once you, you know? It's a, it's, it is, it's a whole new world. And every, every little topic you pick up and you just, you know, explain is a, a rabbit hole of its, of its own that you could spend months and years on, right? It's, it's insane, but it's a whole, it's a whole world that the majority of people don't tap into and don't explore, right? Because it's, it's, it is scary. It is on the edge. People are learning know, though. The world, the world is waking up. It's slow, but they are. It is. It. I. I would agree. I've never seen it so much than over the past two years. You know, I think we have the two, two categories that happen is we had people get more comfortable, you know, and maybe get themselves in in some not great situations, um, and then there's the people who looked at it as an opportunity to to question and to uh, lo- open their eyes a little bit more, right? And that includes looking inward. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. So it's it's exciting to see that side of things. I think it's really cool to see more people stepping into that. And, and you know, as we put out conversations like this, the questions that happen behind the scenes, the DMs that come and the curiosity that peaks. And, and that's why this work is important, right? The more this is put out there, those that are searching for it and maybe on the brink start stepping into it, right? And... um we're able to guide a little bit of a way for them and, and, and just, just keep leaving those breadcrumbs. Well, it's remembering, right? And in my opinion, it's, it's remembering. You're, you're, you have memory outside of your brain, in your body and in your soul and all these beings. And, and you know, with, with people like, look what happened with you. you. You came into a program, you experienced something that felt so good, so visceral. And you were like, holy shit, what have I been doing? It's like, and then you jumped in and you're like, I got to share this. It's like you remember and then we get to work and we create ripples. And that's how that's how this goes. And, you know, I think the cool part about all of this, especially with someone like you getting into it, is we're not the quintessential spiritual humans, right? Like personally... You know, I got, I, I ride motorcycles or I ride dirt bikes. I'm, 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 I'm a wild man. I wear crop tops. I'm, I'm this total out of control human. And at the same time, I, I tap in, I go super deep. You know, I'm successful in business and I go deep in all these things. I live my life and I go deep into spirituality. It's like, yes. we don't need to be wearing white robes and never cut our hair and drown ourselves in patchouli to be spiritual, you know, it, it's there's this new evolution, this new breed of spiritual human, which still enjoys the fruits of life, but doesn't take this story or this idea of what we are at face value. You know, and I think that's that's what 100%. makes it so cool about seeing someone like you with this podcast now and how you're taking it and running. It's it's really, really cool. It's changing. It's becoming a lot more approachable. Right. Even when I got into it, you know, I moved to Bali. That's that was my big step. I moved to Bali and out there, you know, you walk up to people and you know, it's it's you know, they're they're telling you they're, you know, they're Arcturian or they're from the Pleiades or you know, all these different things take place and you're just kinda like, Well, okay, cool, like this is great. But, you know, for a lot of people that can be very confronting. So props. Yeah. No, massively appreciate it. And it's, it, it is, it is neat to see, to see the different journeys. And I know you and I have had this conversation too, that <clears throat> we see a lot more people leaning into it from that maybe had a bit of an extreme past, you know what I mean? And I mean that in the sense of also the, the unconscious parts, the drugs, the alcohol, the party, but also, you know, finding the highs in the activities that we do. Um, because you can, you resonate with, the breathwork journeys, the meditation journeys, when you get that similar feeling and you're like, holy shit, I've, 
I've been higher than I've ever been in my life by sitting by myself and breathing, you know, and, and, and had similar visuals to when we've had those, those substances. So when you realize you can do that without, you know, those, those pieces, it's, it's pretty magical and we can explore those parts of ourselves, um, by just diving inwards and looking and listening and creating space. And then that's, that's what gets, you know, I think people that lead excited is it's like, well, if I can do this, why can't everybody do this? And why can't we share this with everyone? Right. And I think there's, there's pros and cons to that side too, because I learned early on in my journey that we can't drag people into this space. Um, you know, all we can do is walk our paths and, and, and those that, are ready, we'll, we'll step in and they'll ask the questions. That's been a big, big lesson for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. Live by example. That's it. Let's be mm -hmm. the change, right? Gandhi had some wisdom. Yeah. Be the change you want to see. Don't be telling people how you want them to change. And, and I, I love that so much. And it, it's cool because, yeah, you're going to trigger a lot of people and you're going to lose some friends. At the same time, people are going to also look out and say, what are you doing? How are you so energized? How are you so excited? How are you so tapped in? Why are you so vibrant? <laughs> you know? And from there you say, well, here's what's going on. Oh, totally. There's so many pieces to it. I love it that have come up. You know, you bring up one like people seeing how many things are being accomplished and moving parts. And well, how do you do that? Where do you find all the time? And when you have X, Y, Z going on and it's like, because I don't spend the time sitting there complaining about it all i do it and you figure it out right and you move like it, it just happens when you're in it it's it truly is it's it's very very different but but um, that's hard man there's extra energy that's created <laughs> that's hard that's totally that's hard it's a lot harder than watching tv <laughs> yeah a lot more yeah, fulfill, could be rewarding though there's, there could have been seven net, seven episodes of Netflix series in there. Man, you know what I mean? You're missing out, bro. <laughs> uh, awesome. So where, what? Yeah, tell me the Costa Rica journey. I know. I mean, how long's it been now? You've been you've been down there for five months ish. Uh, almost seven now. Crazy. Yeah, almost seven months. Costa Rica is amazing. It's uh, you know, I so I've been remote, quote unquote. For about five years now, I lived in Bali for a couple of years, COVID hit, went back to Canada, got a Tesla, lived in a duplex, wanted to walk out into the middle of Lake Huron and never come back. And, you know, after, after that experience back in Canada and seeing how everything went during that time, Oh, geez. We, we won't yeah. get into that. that. That's a whole other thing. No. And at the same time, I, I just said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not meant for this place. There's too many rules and regulations. And after living in Bali where, you know, I like to use Bali's traffic as an example for life there where it, everyone, it's like total organized chaos. You know what I mean? Like everyone's all over the place, but somehow there's like a, a hive mind where everybody knows what's up. So I, I, I loved that about Bali. And I, and when I came back to this like rudimentary robotic way of life in Canada and even the U S cause I went to the U S for a while, I just, it just didn't feel like me. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a jungle being, I need wildness. I need chaos. I need crocodiles. I need to be chasing snakes out of my house. I need to be doing, you know, all the fun, wild stuff. Primal. I need to be more primal. Exactly. So I heard about Costa Rica and being, being the, you know, limber human that I am, I was just able to, you know, pack up my stuff, hop on a flight a week later and check it out. Bought a motorcycle down south near Panama and rode up the coast checking out a bunch of different towns and different spots and landed in Nosara where I'm at now and started building community and Ryan's down here now. And we've got a really cool hub of, of people and a conscious kind of little haven here with also an amazing surf break that's pumping about 350 days a year. So 
Um, Sounds terrible. It's not, not a bad place to be. <laughs> um, I love you bringing up Ryan. Let's let's and I don't even know this, so I'm gonna I ask this: How did you guys meet in the first place? Because now you have such a beautiful world and programs you've created and helped so many individuals together. Um, did you guys just meet online through the the, the work? We met on Tinder. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say grinder. <laughs> grinder, but... you're a classic. <laughs> That's a Vancouver classic. Um, so. Ryan and I and I love this before before you go into this because I do love this topic as well and it's you know a, a, it's been in my life in the last little while as well but I love if you could just go on to um yeah what it was like when you guys met because it it you know some people can make it awkward and some people in this space it can be beautiful and it's it's such a different thing for especially for the definition of of a man mm. right and i want to talk a little bit about that yeah, too yeah, yeah. um but what people put around that and and you know so i'll let you i'll let you run with it but how did yeah tell me how you guys got connected. yeah definitely so it was really basic at first you know to be honest i was i was living at a hotel in bali and i met a friend who was cooking in the kitchen one day his name was callum he we became homies we jumped off waterfalls did some cool shit together and and he he basically, you know, at one point was like, oh, you got to meet my business partner, Ryan, because they were in in business at that time doing coaching programs together. And so Ryan, you know, I went rock climbing or we went indoor bouldering. I, you know, all my rock climbing friends would would kill me if they actually, you know, heard me say that that was rock climbing. <laughs> so we went to a bouldering gym and uh, we met and and had a great time. Bouldering gym burned down a week later, so we didn't have many more of those experiences. Yeah. <laughs> but we, you know, we stayed in touch, but we didn't really connect that much. We went on a couple of trips. We went up north. He, we went, you know, on some jungle adventures, but it was more just, you know, kind of when it, when it worked. But we, we were in contact and we tried to set up a bunch of stuff, but we were just so, so busy that it never really lined up the way that we wanted it to. And so I left Bali and, and we stayed in touch, but he started following my journey. And at, at that point, you know, I was really with, you know, in, in body lean transformation, the program that you did, I was really merging the worlds of spirituality and fitness into one, one kind of space. And so he was really stoked on that because he was big into spirituality as well as fitness. And, and he really was interested in it. So he was like, Cam, I really love what you're doing. You know, how can I be involved? And I was like, well, you know, we still don't really know each other that well. I said, come in, do the program. Let me know what you think. So he came in, he he did the program and then he got out and he was like, he's like, I love this, man. He's like, you've got something super special here. I resonate so deeply with it. Like, what would it look like for, you know, me to support you in this? And, and so, you know, at first we tried like him, you know, recruiting people for the program. And then it just kind of evolved and eventually got to a place where I was like, well, do you just want to, you know, kind of, you know, coach a bit in it? Do you want to be more connected to the people and just, you know, help me in that sense? And so he started coaching a bit in the program, which, which went really well. And, and then over the time, we just got closer and closer. And, um, you know, we still, you know, we probably spent two years where we didn't see each other in the flesh. It was all online. And, uh, and then, you know, at one point, you know, he, he came and visited me in Vancouver and we went and just adventured and played and, and really realized that there was this, this connection between us. And, um, he, he just, he brought out a side of me that, that I was losing touch with. I brought out a side of him that, you know, he really wanted to, to foster more of. And we just really started enjoying each other's company. And over the course of that, he got more involved with Embodied and my company. And now he's director of community. And, you know, he's, he, he's basically, you know, a assistant coach and assistant facilitator and a lot of the stuff that we do and, and now co-host with, with me on the Ignite You podcast. So we've really started to really find a good groove and, and we bring a really cool element together. And so it just evolved and naturally our friendship evolved as well. And, and him and I have a very, a very, you know, intimate personal relationship. All right. Don't read too much into the word intimate. Okay. I'm sure we'll get into that in a bit, but we also have a very, you know, professional relationship and we keep the two very separate. 
Um, at, at the same time, the, the podcast is kind of a blend of those two, but that's more, more, you know, fun for us. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been an evolution and, and now, you know, he moved down to Costa Rica. So he's in Bali now facilitating a retreat, but, um, he lives now in Nosara. So we're, we're teaming up to just build conscious hubs and powerful transformational experiences for, for, you know, the people in our world. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, I, I love it because in this world, you know, it's, it is unique in that way, right? Where you're, you're going to meet people like that because you're willing to go deeper, right? Whereas if you take it to your average everyday person, they're only having those surface level conversations, you know, and, and, and if they go a step further, it's a, it's a beer at, at a pub where, you know, you're, you're stooping below consciousness or it's, or it's a coffee and it's all about business for the most part. Right. It's th something like that. But this world opens up to those deeper level conversations when that safe space is created. And that's what I love as well, because, um, I think you can attest to it that if you guys didn't have that, you wouldn't be where you are today. Not a chance. Not right? a chance. And it's, you, you could have, of course, you could have stayed bros and fist pumped and just kept it surface, but you chose to open yourselves up and be vulnerable and allow that space for that to happen. And that's how this shit's mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, so it's, funny you, you, it's, 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 it's funny you it's say amazing. that because I, I didn't, the, my first impression with Ryan, you know, and he'll probably listen to this after was, I was like, uh, you know, I was just kind of like, Oh, I just, you know, just a dude doing his thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> he asked for a breathwork journey from me. And he, he, you know, I served him a breathwork journey and I remember going in on this one-on-one -on -one breathwork journey and he went all in, like all in. And, and at that point I was serving a lot of people breathwork, right? So I, I have a pretty good understanding of, of how people take that medicine or don't. And he took it powerfully. And I remember being like, okay. Cause I take it powerfully and I, I, you know, there's not many people that go in as deep as I would. And when I met somebody that would go that deep and he was snotting and screaming and crying and sweating, convulsing, like he was just fully in it. You know, he goes into it in you know, our episode that's coming out this Monday, but he goes into it where it just was this full expression of him in his journey. And I remember as a facilitator, like everyone has their own journey, but I remember having this feeling of like, ooh, this is a guy that, that I'm going to get. Because yes, everybody expresses differently and it's all beautiful. At the same time, I resonated with how he approached it. And so that was really what brought us together was this depth, you know? And I think that's really something cool that you're highlighting right now is, is, when we're on this path and we find that depth and we find people that are willing to go into those areas, they're keepers, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> 100%. Yeah. It's, I mean, I've had my own interaction and friend that it's happened with, and that's why I've was able to realize that on this path, you know, I had a place where I was super lonely and I was, I, I truly believe we manifested each other, you know, because we were both in a darker place looking for, more and we're like i don't need drinking buddies i don't need xyz and we're not playing hockey or playing sports anymore we're not in an office space so it's it is harder to 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 have those connections you know and um yeah i mean i met trev strolling two kids by my house with a beer in his hand every day and we chose to have further chats to not just keep it about that right and that's 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 what opened my eyes to that world it's kind of and now we've co-created a bunch of stuff and we're on this journey together it's going deeper and uh it's 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 pretty pretty neat but yeah it's 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 great how when you have that too you guys can just create and i i agree looking from from the outside you guys have such an amazing balance with one another right it's 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 beautiful to see and um and people resonate to you and what you guys provide for that mm -hmm. reason too. Mm -hmm. And it's truth, man. You know, that's, that's really what, you know, I, I, I'd love to, you know, where I'd love to go with this is that Ryan and I are no bullshit. Like with who we are to one another, like I can be exactly who I need to be in front of that man. And he, it, he won't give a shit, you know, he'll hold me in it. 
I can tell him exactly what's on my mind, even if it's about him. And he'll listen, you know? And, yeah. and so it, it's not the no, defensiveness. There's and, no ego. There's nothing to yeah. prove. It's like, I see you as, as, as my, my bro, as a soul. And I'm going to call you on your shit. You're going to call me on my shit and we're going to evolve as people. And if you call me on my shit and I think it's something that you need to look at, I'm going to dish that back to you. And then we're going to have a conversation about it. You know, and and so there's there's no bullshit. And at the same time, we have fun. You know, and I think that's something that is so overlooked, especially in the spiritual community, you know, and and for me now I have a rule and it's like I need to be able to surf glassy waves and surf the cosmos with my people, you know, like and yes, not everyone is going to surf. So it's just it's it's just a a saying, but it's the essence of. You know, we got to have fun. We got to enjoy these human experiences because we could die and be on to the next any moment. So let's let's embrace it. Let's have fun and let's leave the bullshit behind because what does it do? Nothing. It doesn't serve us in any way. It just limits us. Doesn't serve right? anybody. So cut the bullshit away. Work on your ego every day. Have fun. Surround yourself with people that are going to help boost you up. And you're going to live a pretty sick life. Totally. It's a good life and we know how much creativity comes from having fun right and being playful it's an it's another thing that as humans and we go through life the majority put away right oh I, adults can't play and that's what you you no, got to get ryan on this podcast to have him talk about that because that's his that's his he's, that's his jam totally. right that's where that's, yeah, that's he shines that's the only reason i separated yeah. you two for the invite is because I, I, you both, I love both your stories as individuals, right? And exactly, that's that's what he brings, and it's, but it's it's so important, you know. And I can tell you, if I learn anything today, um, in a massive way from my kids that chose me, right, is 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 play and is the simple things in life and the teachings that they have. And I can tell you, like I went to, uh, t- I went to a social event a couple weekends ago, and. Um, Ah, oh, it was it was the coolest thing for me to pick up on my evolution, if you will, because you know it was thirty parents, probably thirty, forty kids. They're all hanging, socializing, drinking. I hear some chirping about the drinking going on, and I'm just smiling inside and laughing, and how much it's not my world anymore. And I found myself sitting on a table by the by the pool with the forty kids. <laughs> nice. And I was as comfortable as I could possibly be about it. Where in the past, my ego might've been, why aren't you with them? Are you not liked? Are you not having, like, you know what I mean? But I was like, I'm learning more from these little motherfuckers over here than I'll ever learn from this over here. And it was beautiful. And I got to interact with this innocence constantly and, you know, get in this sense of play and and just, uh, this is really interesting. But I love... Play is so important as we get older to to keep us 100%. grounded. And we, you know, you did the best thing ever. We need to learn from kids. You know, that was what one of the you know what Ryan talks about all the time is learn from kids. You know, watch how they express, watch how they because they 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 don't have the the prefrontal cortex that adults do to decide whether something socially acceptable or not or how it's going to affect their image or any of that bullshit. No, there's no filter. There's no. There's no care about what others are thinking. You know, it's it's beautiful to watch. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's innocence. It's truth. It's all of those amazing things. And, um, you know, but again, the majority of adults are what can we teach them? What can we, you know, how can we shape them? How can we mold them? How can you don't? You guide them, you know, you guide. You can point, point, point certain ways but let them be look both ways before you run across the street and you tell me the rest little one you know it's like you know i you know yeah that's so beautiful you know when i moved to bali it was so funny i had this this idea i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna move and i'm gonna help bali i'm gonna this white savior right i'm like i'm gonna help people and i remember going out there and I, i i sat there and i remember looking and being like oh no they're all gonna help me Cause I don't know anything <laughs> and they are so happy. And I don't know if, you know, you've been to Bali, right? Like the people are so happy and so beautiful and they have absolutely nothing. 
nothing. And here we are. Exactly. But they have everything. Right? They have nothing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it, I, you're just like, wow, okay. I know shit all about anything. Yeah. Yeah, because of what we're born into, right? In the society we grew up in, and it's 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 backwards. And but it's it's beautiful when you can see the other side and 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 feel and see that truth mm-hmm. and lean into. Yeah, it. So my my dad sent me a quote the other day. It said, "It said, love what you have, don't want for what you don't have." And it's like that's just the simplest form of of you know joy and fulfillment. And so hard in a consumerist world where we're completely bombarded with marketing and, you know, our emotional strings are being played at every friggin scroll of the phone at the same time. You know, it's important to remember that we got air in the lungs, you know, we got you know warm soil under our feet. We got families that, you know, either, you know, are friends or people connected to us. We've got you know, all these things to be grateful for. And oh, it's man, important totally. to, to remember that. When we wake up in the morning and you can, you can use totally. your two legs, right? Like it's getting back to the basics. And, and if you can do that yeah. every day, we're winning. hundred percent, my man. Could not agree more. Yeah. Awesome. So another one for you on, because you guys serve so often and so much, Right. What do you do to, to keep yourself in check beyond, beyond the obvious? Of course, you're doing breath work. Of course, you're doing meditation yourself. Um, but maybe, you know, do, do you have guides that you're leaning into from time to time? What are you doing to level up and, and make sure that you're able to also, you know, continue to, to feed people and serve people um, how they can better themselves? I have margaritas, man. <laughs> all right all right all no, right you know and i say that jokingly but at the same time i say that seriously where i let myself muggle you know i let myself be in you know total non-spiritual places so you know dirt biking surfing um you know hiking playing going to waterfalls you know going to dance you know, I would say that my my biggest support is probably ecstatic dance because I can just move and I can shake the shit off. I can just play. I can have fun because for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a trauma release breathwork practitioner. And Ryan and I have this conversation a lot. He's like, dude, you're a demon slayer. Like you're in the darkness a lot, you know, and with my clients, I'm usually going deep into helping them realize how they've cultivated these lives based on the expression of pain that's rooted in trauma in their bodies. So most of what I do is all about diving deep into people's pain. So for me, my biggest support is play, enjoyment, laughter, you know, surfing. For me, surfing four to six times a week is now a non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable because I have so much fun. The ocean cleans me, grounds me, does all that as well. So it's kind of the perfect thing. And at the same time, you know, yes, over the years, I've worked with psychotherapists. I've had coaches of my own. Currently, I don't. I'm actually looking for a new support. But for me, it's I find it's challenging to find, especially because of, you know, the layers that I've gone through. I have to find someone that's really deep and that can take time. So right now I'm looking for the right person that's going to hold me in that respect. At the same time, I really lean on mother nature. I lean on like going out with my friends. I've gotten to a place now where, you know, I can have a margarita and that to me, I do it very consciously. I love margaritas. I love the taste of it. It's delicious. And so for me, I can sit and have a drink with my friends and shoot the shit and just have one, maybe two, if it's a wild night. But allow for myself to have that experience, maybe cook a really nice dinner, have a glass of wine. So for me, it's, it's, it's leaving these containers of deep spiritual work that require a lot of intensity and, and balancing it with play, balancing it with, you know, going out and and enjoying some of the finer things that at the beginning of my spiritual journey, I completely obliterated. Like I would not, I didn't drink for three and a half years. I didn't do any of these things because it was like, no, I'm on the spiritual path. I'm conscious. I can't do this, which I think is important for everybody to do at some point to really get a handle on 
the unconscious behaviors behind the things that you need to take a break from. However, once you find a new place of wanting to use them for intentional enjoyment, then I lean on those things to balance out. So it's kind of a mouthful, but that's, that's, no, I think that's great. And I think that's really important that you bring that up because, um, even going from that place of not doing any of that, right. To, to starting to, there could be a real, uh, judgment coming from yourself. Right. And so I think you bring up a really important piece there to not do that and know that it's okay because you're doing it consciously. Right. And, and there's a reason behind it and there is intention and, and, um, and it helps give that balance and we need that balance because, uh, it, it's it creates harmony, right. With the two worlds and, and lets us know the two worlds can be one. So I love that. That's, that's important. Um, <clears throat> Ayahuasca. I would love if I know you you could probably do a whole other hour on this. So but I would if you can just give me a highlight because it's um it is even for my selfish own reasons, you know, it is something I'm gonna be exploring in future and I would love to just hear a what was your final kind of push to say, I want to explore this? Maybe a little bit about your journey, if you don't mind sharing. Um, and maybe some some reflections that came from it. Yeah, so it's definitely a, a big topic. <laughs> um, to answer your first question, what was the final kind of push to work with her? Was her calling me? You know, I think with ayahuasca, the most important aspect of that medicine is she calls you. And I think a lot of people are forgetting that. I think a lot of people are just hearing this concept of ayahuasca. And sadly, she's going extinct because she's being overused, you know. And and so a lot of times people are like, oh, I've heard that ayahuasca is a very psychedelic experience. It's good for my spiritual journey. It's going to heal me. So they just go and do it. And a lot of those times, those people get slammed, right? And so, it, you know, before I go into this, I think it's really important to say that she's a spirit. It's not a drug. It's not a medicine. It's a medicine, but she's a spirit. And so I had probably been invited to about, you know, 10 to 12 ayahuasca ceremonies. And I turned them all down because... I didn't feel the call. I didn't feel it in my heart. It didn't feel right. And more recently, she started coming into my dreams. I was having vines wrapping me in my dreams, like in a really like comforting way. And I could feel this energy of, of grandmother around me. And so I signed up for a retreat and just with all the COVID stuff and how things changed in the U S when I was there, it turned out that I couldn't go on the retreat. So I was like, okay, you know, for me, that's it. You know, I'm, I'm not going. And, and, you know, I, I, I did that out of fear. You know, I did it out of fear where I didn't go to the jungle because I couldn't get back into the U S at that point in time. And there was just a, you know, a, a bunch of, a bunch of issues around that. And so, I stayed in the U S and I kept having bad things happen to me, kept having broke my tooth, got COVID really bad. You know, I ended up driving into a hurricane fire. Like I injured myself, everything just started going sideways. And I was like, okay, I didn't listen. I'm supposed to go to the jungle. I'm heading out. So I went out and went down and and sat with two medicine men by myself for, you know, about 10 days in the Amazon. And I did what's called a dieta. And a dieta is, a lot of people get this confused. A lot of people think the dieta is just like the diet that you do leading up to it and the diet that you do after. It is that. But when you do a dieta down in the jungle, it means you're dieting a master plant. And ayahuasca is almost used as like the doorway for you to to work with that other master plant. So I, I dieted a, a plant called bulbenzana, which is the sirena plant, which is the, the mermaid plant. And it's a heart opener and it's a tree bark that they shave off and soak in water and you drink every, every day, 
you know, throughout the course of your dieta. And then every second day you sit a ceremony of ayahuasca. So the, the Bobanzana would take me into a lucid state, works with you in the dream realm. And then ayahuasca would take me on her own journey to work with Bobanzana. And so still to this day, I'm trying to unpack and integrate everything that I learned. And at the same time, you know, the, the biggest lesson that she taught me is that I am my own source of power, not spirit, not a crystal, not this concept or this idea of things outside of me. It's like, I am a universe. I am a God in the flesh. I am a divine creator. And I have the ability to create my own reality and hold myself more than anybody or anything ever can. Because I am spirit. I am the divine as a being, right? Not just me. I'm not saying this as, as a, you know, as, as an ego head of me. I'm saying all of us. And so it, 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 her biggest lesson just taught me that I, I am my best resource no matter what. And, and it's funny because, you know, I'll share this story. So I was in my third ceremony, my third ayahuasca ceremony when I was there. I, I had a translator, but he would drink medicine with us as well. So the shamans would drink and the translator would drink. And that third ceremony, I drank it and I was like, it just like made me shudder, right? I was like, ooh, that, that was strong. You know, and, and I went, oh, this is going to be interesting. So, you know, I sat in meditation and, and sure enough, just, you know, you're just gone. Right. And I'm in this state of eternal blackness all around me. I can't I can't see my hands. I can't. I'm just this expansive nothingness. And I'm like, OK. I'm focusing on my breath. I can feel my breath. So I know I still have a body. And I remember going, but I could really use a reference point. Like I'm feeling pretty disoriented. And so I, I yell out for my translator, who's also my space holder, which let's just not even call him that. But I would be like, I was like, Rod, Roger, Roger. I'm like, I need you. <laughs> I was like, how are you? And Roger, all I hear is this kind of muffled like, oh, Cam, I'm really bad. And then he just starts barfing, right? Just purging, 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 purging. And so I, I had a panic for a moment because I was like, oh, no. Like, I need a reference point. I'm, I'm losing myself here. And it was at that point in time where I just, I, when I have two options, you know, I have one option is I can go into panic and freak out. I'm in the middle of the Amazon, three hours up the river, no service. There's nobody who's going to help me, right? If I die, I'm dying. That's just the nature of the beast. Or I can choose to laugh, laugh actually. And just, yeah, exactly. Laugh and surrender and be like, whatever. And so I chose, I chose that. I chose to laugh and surrender. And, and, and she came through where she was just like, you have yourself always. And you always have this choice, whether it's an anxious expression or you're getting angry or whatever is coming up in your life. You have this choice. You can choose to play into the story, the fear, the reaction, or you can choose to resource yourself and be with yourself and choose to laugh at this because she was like, this is all a joke. Like none of this is really inherently real. So what are you stressing about? Even if you do die right now, it's okay. Life's harder than death. Trust me. You know, and, and so I came into this place where it just, it just gave, it gave me this power that I now feel in myself where I'm, you know, I, I know that no matter what I've got me. You know, and, and that is a, a very important thing, I think, for most people. Now, would I recommend that most people go and spend 10 days in the Amazon jungle by themselves and sit ayahuasca? No, because some people can have serious psychotic breaks in that. I had and have a lot of tools, right, that I use during these ceremonies. So, you know, for me, that's what it had to look like. That's just where, what I wanted to go into.
Yeah, I think no, I think that's massive, and it's great you point that out. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a hashtag ayahuasca. It's, it's, uh, it's a very deep and personal experience, and you've, you've, well, you've led many years now of prepping for it, right? For sure, <clears throat> for sure. And as, you know, as and you said, you felt she came to you. Yeah, yeah, she will, and and if she's not calling you, don't sit with her because. She's not, she, you know, she's loving and, and to, you know, to fight, to end on it, I felt more love in my body in that experience that I ever had. I cried all day one day because I couldn't, I didn't know how to deal with the amount of love coursing through every cell in my body. It was astronomical, you know, and at the same time, she's the most loving and beautiful thing you might ever experience. And if you don't approach her with reverence, she, She's going to kick your ass. Could, be the, could bring up and, the darkest. And it can be yeah. the darkest, scariest, most terrifying experience. And people do die in ceremony, right? It's, it's not that that doesn't happen, you know? So it's, it's important to know that you're playing with something very, very serious, right? Very, very, but requires reverence. And if you approach her with reverence and love and openness and surrender and you do the diet leading up to it and you do the diet after and you do it in a very ceremonial beautiful way she's got you yes if you're called yeah you know i love that thanks for sharing of course my brother so let's go into what you guys are doing tell me a bit about your program today with inbody with ignite and just just paint a picture of of your world the magic that you and ryan are putting together and and you know what you guys offer people beautiful man so right now we're not doing any more online programs. We're we're moving to the in-person experiences. Um, I've had a dream for a very long time of being able to kidnap people and show them just how juicy life can be beyond their pain and their trauma. So we're starting to do that. We're running our first retreat in Costa Rica in Nosara this December 29th to January 4th. So it's a New Year's reset. It's like you come out here, you're with us. We're going to totally like, you know, rewire your system to show up for 2023 in this powerful, abundant, you know, amazing state. Uh, and we're going to we're going to run multiple of these a year We're we're going to announce when the next where the next one's going to be in the world shortly as well. So those are coming up. We've got the embodied app that's going to be coming out soon. Hopefully in the next three weeks, I can get it done. That's going to be an application with with breath work, movement, meditation, Basically, um, it, whatever state you want, you select the state and we've got a whole series of routines that'll get you into that state. So that's coming out. Uh, and we've got a bunch of cool tools that are, are coming out around that as well that are in pilot phase right now. And what we're super stoked on is, is our podcast, the Ignite You podcast that's out now. It's, it's you know, we've, we're just episode three will be out on Monday, but it's, it's been beautiful. It's been so fun, so powerful. Uh, for Ryan and I to dive in, it's been, it's, I, I haven't been, you know, this excited about a project for a long time. It's just, we have so much fun and it's a, it's a really approachable dive into this work and the deep work as well as, you know, the fun, the play, the excitement, all these things. So that's like, those are kind of the that. three things I've, I've listened to episode one and that's what I, I do love the balance. You know, you guys have got the goofiness, the fun, but there's deep, gems of amazing messages within and so it, it really does keep it lighthearted, but deliver the, those the messages the important messaging so it's uh you guys have done mm-hmm. done well and i'm excited to see what other episodes come out awesome awesome brother yeah it's it's been a good time <clears throat> right really on has. Well, before we go i always have two powerful questions that i asked at the end uh well they may be powerful they could be super easy and shallow um because this is called the Conscious Creator Podcast, I would love to know your personal definition of a conscious creator or living consciously and how it relates to your life. To me, a conscious creator means somebody that is aware of their own unlimited ability to cultivate and create the life that they want to live. So Beautiful. it's someone that has the power uh, that uses the power of intention to 
you know, break down these barriers, these boxes, these ideas of what a human is supposed to be and how we're supposed to live and ultimately leans into, you know, their own limitless power to create impact and ripples and beauty in the world. Amazing. Love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this one, give a moment too to think about it because it's a powerful one. But if you could choose one piece of advice to give to your younger self at any age where you feel you need to hear it with, of course, the knowledge that you have today, what would that be? Connect as deeply as you can to your heart mm. and relentlessly express your truth. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Amazing, brother. Well, that is all I had for us today. And I have deep gratitude for you for, for lending your time today and all your wisdom and your beautiful stories. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you uh, showing up today for, for, for me and lending your time to, to dive in. An honor and a pleasure, my man. I love seeing what you're doing. Keep creating ripples, my dude. It's absolutely beautiful to watch your continuous transformation. It's epic. Thank Thank you, brother. Well, tons of love, and I know we'll connect real soon. Uh, yeah, let's get it, my man. Bye for now. If today's episode resonated with you in any way or you feel it added value to your day, please, please, please feel free to share it with friends. And of course, link and subscribe so that you can be alerted for future episodes. We sincerely appreciate you watching. And always remember to learn, laugh, and love. Until next time. Thank you.